Okay, welcome to Healing Truths. This is uh, 30 Days of Healing videos, and this is Healing Truth number 10. This is a continuation of Isaiah 53, Healing for the, in the Atonement for the Total Man, and we're going to go into the New Testament now. So we're going to look at Isaiah 53 again, but let's first look at Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus was sent to set the oppressed free. And we can see this link again of sin and sickness in the New Testament and how the healing was for all, for the total man. Let's look in 1 John 3, first in verse 5. It says, you know that he appeared in order to take away the sins. It's talking about Jesus. And in 1 John 3, 8, it says, the reason the Son of Man appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus purchased man's health and healing just as he purchased our salvation from sin. Salvation is the Greek word sozo which means to save, keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, and it's often used of both spiritual and physical healing. The total man consists of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Sozo was for bodily healing, for the deliverance of the soul, and also for spiritual healing. That's all three parts of man. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6, we talked about this last time, but I'm going to read it again. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet he, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And now if we can turn to Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17, it says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities, and he bare our sickness. So right here you can see that the writer interpreted Scripture with Scripture. He took the Isaiah prophecy and said, This is what it is. So there should be no doubt for anybody who reads that Scripture that it, it should convince you that that was for healing for the body as well as the soul. And if that one doesn't, let's go on to 1 Peter 2.24. It says, He himself bore our sicknesses in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So this is another place where we can see that link between sin and sickness. And we also see that they talk about it in the past tense. It's already been done, Right. Let's again look at another verse, and this is talking about communion. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 11, starting in verse 23. For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, and that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In, in the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Verse 27 says, Whoever therefore eats this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of con concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks damnation on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged." 
So <clears throat> I know I used to misunderstand these scriptures and thinking, that, okay, if you're in sin, then you shouldn't take communion. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying just the opposite. It said if you're weak and sickly, because you don't discern the Lord's body, then you, have, you don't have the understanding of what transpired when Jesus took the stripes and he endured the whipping post. It was for our physical healing. This is represented in the bread, and the blood was for forgiveness of sins, for our spiritual healing. So God created the Lord's Supper for a reason. When you receive it, you should plan to partake of everything that Jesus uh, his whole sacrifice provided for you. Um, that would be salvation, peace of mind, healing, and total prosperity. Otherwise, you're neglecting to enjoy the gifts that he sacrificed to give you. The Lord's Supper is much more than just a religious tradition. It symbolizes everything Jesus did for us at Calvary. When you partake of the cup, that which represents the blood, you are remembering that Jesus delivered you from sin when you eat the bread, representing his body, you are acknowledging the physical and spiritual torment Jesus endured to deliver you from temptation, addiction, worry, care, fear, poverty, lack, every part of the curse. That includes sickness and disease. You don't have to wait until you go to church to receive communion. You can receive at any time, anywhere. The communion table is the healing table the deliverance table, and the confession table. So if you say to me that I'm still dealing with a besetting sin or an illness, then my suggestion to you would be to start taking communion. Learn what the new covenant says that you're in and believe God will heal you. So I'm going to put um, a sample communion prayer in the description or the comments. Um, but I wanted to summarize that in the healing healing in the atonement, that it is always God's will that someone be healed. You do not have to ask before ministering healing to yourself or anyone else. Search the New Testament to see if you ever see Jesus or a disciple asking God to heal somebody, because I don't think you're going to find it. But it's a fact to be believed and acted, acted upon, not a matter of having enough faith. Don't worry about faith. It's really a matter of stubbornness. At what point are you willing to give up your right uh, and inheritance of healing of your total man in the atonement? God does not need a, to okay a healing or grant a healing or flip a switch in heaven to send a healing. All we need to do is look forward in faith and look back at the fact that it is finished. So I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to ask God, help us just to remember what has been done and that God's will is for us to be saved, healed, and delivered. Let us be fully convinced that it has already been done. It is finished. And that what we need to do is to receive it by faith right now. Amen.